Ephesians 4, verse 1. Let's speak it together. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to what? Walk worthy of the calling with which you were called, with all loneliness. Not loneliness, okay? Loneliness. That's humbleness. And gentleness. And with long suffering, bearing with one another in love. In other words, putting up with things. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. But to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, he says, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. One of the things the Spirit brought to me today, he, I, I said, what do you want to talk about? And I saw reliability. I'm thinking of reliability. And he said, not enough of my people are reliable. Being reliable. See, you can be available, but are you reliable? Are you consistent? Can you be trusted? Reliable. And he began to talk to me about the gifts and the callings. And that's what he wants to release, about the understanding of the gifts and the callings. You know, there's more callings. You can be called in multiple things. Amen? Now, we know that we have a, a foundation to where we're called to battle. Amen? And our purpose is to destroy Satan's kingdom. And our destinies infiltrate the world system. And bring many people to Christ. But here are the gifts and the callings. Is where you are called to serve God. God has gifted you with abilities. Many miss the call of opportunity. And misuse the gifts or the abilities. Or what we call talents. Because they become dull of hearing. They become what? Dull of hearing. They become hardened hearted and unsensitive to God's presence and unction. And that's because the carnal and the soulless emotional have overtaken those areas. In Matthew 25 and verse 14. Gifts and callings. Verse 20, or verse 14, Matthew 25, verse 14. Hallelujah. It says, read it with me, for the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. And the one he gave five talents to another two and to another one to each according to his own what? Ability. Or what we might call talent. Amen. And immediately he went out on a journey. And then he who had the five received five more talents. Went and traded with them and made another five talents. And likewise he who had two received two gained two more. But he who had received one went and dug it in the ground and hid his Lord's money. Now I want you to understand that there's two parts to this. There's a physical and a spiritual. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came and settled accounts with them. And he who had received the five talents came and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents. Look, I have gained five more talents besides them. And as the Lord said to him, good, well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. He also had received two talents, came and said, Lord, you delivered to me two talents. Look, I have gained two more talents besides them. And his Lord said the same thing. Well, good, done, and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Now, there's something about the word talents. It's not only the abilities, 
But it's also associated with reward. Everyone say reward. Then he who had received one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you would be a hard man, reaping where you have not sown, gathering where you have not scattered seed. And I was afraid and went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, there you have what is yours. But his Lord answered and said to him, You wicked and lazy servant, you knew that I would reap where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. You ought to have deposited my money with the bankers, and at my coming I would have receive back my own with interest. Therefore, take the talent, take the ability, and take the reward from him and give it to him who has what? Ten. For everyone who has, more will be giving. And he who has abundance, but from him who does not have, even what he has will be what? Taken away. Cast an unprofitable servant into the outer darkness, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. An unprofitable servant. He missed use of talents and abilities God gifted these, this one guy with. Listen, he gives all of us. We have gifts and abilities and talents which can be used to promote the kingdom of Christ. But many lose sight of it. They lose track. You know, this is where he says many are called but few remain. It's called chosen. Again, the one, he had the talents and the abilities God gave it. You were born with talents and abilities. Amen? And so in these things, God has given us. Then he matures them as by the Holy Spirit. As you begin to utilize them by yielding to the Spirit of the living God, you begin to produce more fruit. But when people begin to misuse them and use them for their own selfish gain, they may still be able to use those abilities and talents, but the rewards of God will be removed. So they'll think they're doing fine, won't they? Yeah, things are going great. Yeah. See, they started off good, but then they drifted. Let's go to another place. 1 Timothy chapter 6. First Timothy chapter 6. Verse 6. First Timothy 6, 6. Let's speak it together. Now godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and clothing with these, we shall be content. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation in a snare and into many foolish and harmful lusts, which drown men with destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, for which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness, and pierce themselves through with many sorrows. But you, O men and women of God, flee these things, and pursue righteousness and godliness and faith, love, patience, and gentleness. Fight the good faith of fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, to which you were also called, and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. I urge you in the sight of God, who gives life to all things, before Christ Jesus, who, saw, who witnessed the good confession before Pontius Pilate, that you keep this commandment without spot and blameless until our Lord Jesus Christ appearing, which he will manifest in his own time. He who is blessed and only potent, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone has immortality dwelling in an unapproachable light, whom no man has seen or can see, to whom be honor and everlasting power. Amen. And again, many stray from their callings because of the love of money produced by the love of self. There's nothing wrong with being wealthy. Amen? As long as you maintain your call 
which is to what? Fight, to battle. Your purpose, to, to what? Destroy Satan's kingdom. And your destiny is to infiltrate the world system. To rescue as many souls as possible. We must maintain that order. Fight, destroy, and rescue. When we begin to allow things to interfere with that divine order that God has called us to, then doors open to the enemy. And things can go along very fine for a period of time until it's time and accountability. Amen? And then there's no reward. Amen? <laughs> Let's go to Matthew 7. Let's see what happened. Uh, actually, I didn't want to go there, did I? Hallelujah. Matthew 7, 21. Let's grow there. Is everybody there? Verse 21, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from you who practice righteous, who practice what? Lawlessness, not righteousness. <laughs> Praise God. Those only practice righteousness come on in, right? <laughs> See, the gifts and callings are revocable. We'll talk about that. But many believe if they're being used by God, they are in good standing with God. That's the great deception. This is a great, great deception. It's of pride and arrogance, thinking that people can get away with it. Does everybody get this? Look at, go to... Uh, First Tim, uh, Romans 11, I'm sorry, Romans 11. In verse 25. Romans 11:25. Let's speak it together. For I do, not, I do not desire, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own opinion, that the blindness in part has happened to Israel until fullness of Gentiles has come in. And so all Israel will be saved, as it is written, the deliverer will come out of Zion, and he will turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant with them, when I take away their sins. Concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sake. But concerning the election, they are beloved of the sake of the fathers. For the gifts and the callings of God are what? Irrevocable. But what about the rewards? Yes, they are revocable. Amen. For as you were once disobedient to God, yet now, uh, now have obtained mercy through your obedience through their disobedience. Even so, these also have now been disobedient that through the mercy shown you, they also may obtain a mercy. For God has committed them to disobedience that he might have mercy on all. All the depths and the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. For who has known the mind of the Lord or who has become his counselor or who has first given him to him and it shall be repaid to him. For of him and through him and to him all things to whom be glory forever and ever and ever. Again, the gifts and the callings of God is irrevocable. That's why many people are still going out doing things that's they, even in ministry. But they're practicing lawlessness. In other words, when they get before him, they didn't get the rewards, did they? Amen. They got judgment, didn't they? 1 Corinthians 13. 
1 Corinthians 13. Simple reminder of the great deception. Besides the global deception that's going on right now. Amen. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 1. Let's speak it. Though I speak with tongues and of men and of angels, but have what? No love. I have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains but not have love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned but have not love, it profits me what? Nothing. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Amen. If, he says, if you love me, you'll what? Obey me. If you love me, you'll what? Obey me. If you want to be like me, he says, you must deny yourself. Pick up the cross and fight. And I'll give you the ability and talents to follow. Amen. See, Again, this is something that must be grasped, understood, and put before us in everything we do. We always must examine ourselves. Am I really doing what I'm supposed to be doing? Now, it doesn't mean that you can have multiple calls, amen? You can, look, at, when somebody says, what's your calling? Whatever God wants. Amen? I'll do whatever he wants. But see, we must get into that place and say, I'll do whatever you want, Lord, because it's not my life, it's yours. Now I'm fulfilling the call. And I'll battle for whatever you give me. I'll battle for it. I'll fight for it. Whatever it is. And I won't move until you move me. I usually get thrown out of places. That's how long I'll stay there. A little bit. First Peter chapter 4. If I didn't hear the Lord tell me move, I wait till I get thrown out. Hallelujah. First Peter chapter 4. And I have been in many places, let me tell you. At one time I was young in Christ and I got invited to a kind of like a seminar of Revelation, the book of Revelation. Boy, they needed a Revelation. Whatever they're talking about, that's how they're doing is glorifying angels and all kinds of stuff. And I was like, man, this is sickening. And I said, Lord, can I go? He said, no. I said, no? You want me to sit through this? He said, yes. So after every one of these hour and a half classes, I'd go out in the hallway and I'd minister to all the people so they wouldn't be deceived. I wasn't calling the people liars. I was showing them the difference of deception and how they were misleading the scriptures. So when I first started a class, if I raised my hand, they would let me ask a question. And then they wouldn't answer me anymore. They were, they were, don't answer him. Don't let him ask any question. So they, I put my hand up, they wouldn't, they, they wouldn't go. So that went on for about a week and a half. About four or five of things I went to. And the Lord said, you can leave now. But basically, they were throwing me out of there. You know, they couldn't wait for me to leave. Because I was exposing the truth by the Holy Spirit. See, that was the problem. They were involved in religion. They were telling everybody, if you didn't go to church on Saturday, you were going to hell. That's plumb dumb. I knew right then that things were wrong. It wasn't the day of Sabbath that you serve. You serve the Lord of the Sabbath. Amen? And so many other things were just way out of order. But anyways, like I said, I'll, I'll stay there until... Either I'm thrown out or the Lord tells me to move. In 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 7. Let's speak it. But the end of all things is at hand, therefore be what? Serious and watchful in your prayers. And above all things have fervent love for one another. For love will cover a multitude of sins. But be hospitable to one another without grumbling. 
as each one has received a gift, minister to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If anyone speaks, let him speak the what? As the oracles of God. If anyone ministers, let him do it with the ability which, which God supplies, that in all things God may be glorified. Through Jesus Christ, to whom belong the glory and the dominion forever and ever and ever and ever. Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, as though some strange thing has happened to you. But rejoice in the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. If you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you, for the spirit of glory and God rests upon you. On their part, he's blaspheming, but on your part, he's glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, a thief, an evildoer, as a busybody in other people's matters. Yet, in any, yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him be glorified, God, in this matter. But the time has come for judgment to begin at the house of God. And if it begins with us first, what will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God? Now... If the righteous one are scarcely saved, where will the ungodly and the sinner appear? Therefore, let those who suffer according to the will of God commit their souls to him in doing good as to a faithful creator. Again, each one has received <laughs> not only spiritual gifts of the Holy Spirit, which are his gifts anyways, but heavenly gifts of wisdom and discernment and understanding, revelations and talents and abilities. People can do art, man. There's, there are people that can come to a service, and we've, we've got a picture. And, man, as praise and worship's going, they're drawing this beautiful by the talents of the ability of, by the Holy Spirit of God. Beautiful. And, and they're expressing God's presence in a different type of manner. Beautiful. People have the abilities in sports and and physical, mental, and intellectual. But don't misuse them for selfish gain, or you will lose every reward. Amen? 1 Corinthians 12. First Corinthians 12. I really believe that there's a tremendous falling away. You know, fear is rampant all over the place. In fact, many of, I mean, you're hearing of many deaths because people have been jabbed. Amen? In fact, right now there's, 90, it's, there's a uh, statistic of 94,537 people that have been jabbed that are hospitalized, have been hospitalized. Here. 2,996 miscarriages because they've been jabbed. 30,010 permanent disabilities. 18,853 deaths. And 894,143 reactions. Many, all these people have been re some sort of reaction. These are just statistics. Hello. And you know, the whole thing is, is uh, my question is, where are, where's all the people that are close to God? <laughs> They're supposed to be hearing what God is saying. Amen? We get called for, to do work in people's homes and stuff. Man, we go in there. First thing I ask them, you've been jabbed? <laughs> if you have and you're a believer, you better repent. Because it is one of the marks of the beast. It is a mark from the beast. It's not the mark, but it is a mark from the beast. And if it's a mark from the beast, that means he comes to what? Steal, kill, and what? Destroy. That's why we're getting all these crazy things. Hallelujah. Verse 1, 1 Corinthians 12. Let's speak it. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I don't want you to be ignorant. You know that you were Gentile, when you were Gentiles, carried away with these dumb idols, however you were led. <clears throat> Therefore I make known to you 
that no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus a curse, and no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are diversities of gifts by the same Spirit. That means Holy Spirit. There are diversities of ministries by the same Lord. That means by Jesus. And there are diversities of activities by, but it is the same God, that means God the Father, who works in all, in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of who? All. For one is given a word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healings by the same Spirit, to another the workings of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, and to another the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as He wills. For as, for as the body is one and has many members, but all members of the, that one body, being many, are of one body, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Greek or, or Jews or Greeks or whether slaves or free or have been made to <clears throat> drink into one spirit. For in fact, the body is not one member, but what? Many. Many members. He says, if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? Of course not. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I am not of the body. Is there... Therefore, not of the body. Is the whole body where an eye, <laughs> where would be the hearing? If the whole, <laughs> if we're, everybody was hearing, where would be the smelling and seeing and so forth? So what is he saying? He's saying the gifts of the Holy Spirit and diversities and the gifts by the Holy Spirit. The ministries of Jesus by the Spirit of God. The manifestations of the Father. But they're all the same Spirit. They are all from the breath of God. The body has many members and functions of callings. And each calling has gifts supplied to provide each function of calling. Amen. Does everybody get it? God will not send you out with gifting you. If he sends you, if, if you're in something and you ain't doing it right, something ain't right. Amen. Now, in this, there's a process of training, isn't there? There's always training for reigning. So you may have the gifts in you that haven't fully been activated yet. Because there's what we call choice. You choose. It says desire the gifts. Amen. It's not a desire there, then you ain't going to get it. So many people are being called for a specific thing. But their desire has been taken captive by the world instead of by the Spirit. So they will never fulfill what God has asked them to do. Hallelujah. 2 Timothy 1. <clears throat> 2 Timothy 1, verse 8. Let's speak it together. Therefore, do not be what? Ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share with me in the sufferings for the gospel according to the power of God, who has saved us and has called us with a what? Holy calling. That means divine. Not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began. <clears throat> but now has been revealed by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who has abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, to which I was appointed a preacher, an apostle, and a teacher of the Gentiles. For this reason I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep what I have committed to him until that day. Hold fast the pattern of sound words which you have heard from me in faith and in love, which are in Christ Jesus. That good thing which was committed to you, kept by the Holy Spirit who dwells in us. Amen? Again, 
We have a holy calling. It's call, if it's a holy calling, it's a divine calling. Amen. Now again, God may, in your calling, you may have many functions. There may be abilities. Let me tell you, He will give you more. If you're faithful to live, He'll give you more. He'll give you more. You'll be able to do multitask like you've never multitasked before. Hallelujah. Matthew 22. <clears throat> That's what the wonderful anointing is all about. He is an eternal keeper of multitasking. Matthew 22 and verse 1. <clears throat> and Jesus answered and spoke to them again by parables and said what? The kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who arranged a marriage for his son and sent out his servants to, the all, and to call those who were invited to the wedding and they were <clears throat> not willing to come. And again, he sent out other servants, saying, Tell those who are invited, See, I've prepared my dinner, my oxen and fatted cattle, and are killed, and all things are ready. Come to the wedding. But they made what? They made light of it. Many people make light of the calling. And went their ways, one to his own farm, another to his own business. And the rest seized his servants, treated them spitefully, and killed them. But when the king heard about it, he was furious, and he sent out his armies, destroyed those murderers, and burned up their city. Then he said to his servants, The wedding is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy. Therefore go into the highways, and as many as you find, invite to the wedding. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all whom they found, both bad and good. And the wedding hall was filled with guests. And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw a man there who had not have on the wedding garments. So he said to him, friend, how did you come in here without a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the servant, bind him hand and foot, take him away and cast him into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen or few remain. Invitation to fulfill a divine calling has been accepted. Many people rejected. Some people compromise. Some people polluted it. But again, for many are called. But few remain. Few remain. Many drift out of that calling to do a self-fulfilling calling. Amen? Go to Philippians 3. <clears throat> Hallelujah. In verse 7. Let's speak it together. But what things were gained to me, these I have counted lost for what? Christ. Yet indeed I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ. And be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith, that I may know him, and the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed to his death, if by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already attained, or am already perfected, but I, what? I press on, that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching toward the thing, those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize, in other words, the reward, of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. In other words, he's going to maintain to receive his rewards. Amen. Therefore, let as many of us as mature have this mind. And if in anything you think otherwise, God will even reveal this to you. Nevertheless, to the degree that we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us be of the same mind. We press forward toward the prize of the divine call at any time, at any place, and for anyone that God sends us to. In other words, reliability. 
God wants us to be reliable. What are we doing? We're bringing, so we can bring all these individuals to the glory of the name of Jesus Christ and what he's done for us as a witness. The chosen have made it a choice at all times, not just of convenience. Does everybody get it? Not just of what? Convenience. You are a steward, a steward and a servant of the Lord and ambassador of Jesus Christ, not when you feel like it, at all times, at any hour, at any day, at any moment. Go to 1 Kings chapter 19. First Kings 19. <clears throat> Everybody okay? In verse 15. First Kings 19 verse 15. Let's speak it together. Then the Lord said to Elijah, Hallelujah, go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when you arrive, anoint Hazel as king of Syria. Also you shall anoint Jehu, the son of Neshmi, as king over Israel. And Elijah, the son of Shaphat, of the Elbow of Maliah, you shall anoint as prophet in your name. It shall be that whoever escapes the sword of Hazel, Jehu, will kill. And whoever escapes the sword of Jehu, Elisha, will kill. I'd say God had a backup. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yet I have reserved 7,000 in Israel, all whose knees have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. So he departed from there. And I found Elijah, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen before him. Now, you got to remember something. To own 12 yoke of oxen is wealthy. Very wealthy. Amen? And he was with the 12. Then Elijah passed by and threw his mantle on him. In other words, that mantle was a representation of call. You are being called. Can you imagine being divinely called and rejecting it? I mean, it's incredible. Could you imagine if the angel showed up to Mary and she said, later? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> now, so he throws his mantle around him. He's being called. And he left the oxen, and ran after Elijah and said, please, let me kiss my father and my mommy. And I, then I will follow you. <laughs> and he said to him, go back again? What have I done to you? In other words, how can you reject this call? How stupid could you be and still breathe? So Elijah turned back from him and took an ox, a yoke of oxen, and slaughtered them and boiled their flesh using the oxen's equipment and gave it to the people, and they ate. Then he arose and followed Elijah and became his servant. What did he do? He burned everything. Anything that was attached to him with his name, that people used to know him as a wealthy family, and all of his talents and all of his abilities, he cut loose. So that he can follow the ways of God. That's what God is asking us. Cut loose of all those things and follow me. And you know one of the things? Let me share this with you. Because so many people just, they, they, they are words. Yeah, yeah, I'll do whatever it takes. Yeah, yeah. But when the time's for it, they're not there. One of the things the Lord said to me. He said, Guy, do you want a new life 
or do you want to be, uh, in other words, do you want to be free from addiction or do you want a new life? I said, well, I want both, you know. But he said, you can't have one without the other. You can't have anything without a new life. And when I said to him, I want a new life, I want to show me. And I knew what it meant. I had to give up everything if I wanted to be free. And that's what he said to me. I said, okay, I'll do whatever it takes. And he said, you know, I'm expecting something, you know. Okay, good. Now do this, do this, do that. And he said to me, show me. Show me you're willing to do whatever it takes. Now, I didn't have the power of the Holy Spirit. I didn't have nothing. I wasn't even born again yet. But he still said, show me. I did everything in my physical power, but I knew I had assistance, <laughs> divine assistance. I mean, I locked myself in the house. I did whatever it took. I stayed away from everything for two months. Then I had the visitation. But again, he's saying, show me. Show me that you really mean it. Don't tell me about it. Show me you really mean it. Show me that your life is mine. Show me that you're possessions are mine. Show me that your choices are my choices. Show me. Amen? Show me. This is where we are at right now. Elijah was called, invited. He had a snap moment, man. Burned past and offered of himself. Whatever you want at any time, at any place. I'm going to close the Galatians 4. Gifts and calling. So don't be deceived by people's gifts and callings. Amen? You'll know them by their desires, won't you? The heart is the core of all desire. Everyone's desire should be to build the house of God. Expand his kingdom. Amen. Galatians 4, verse 1. Hallelujah. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, does not differ at all from a slave, though he is master of all. But under what? Guardians and stewards until the time appointed by the Father. So, even so, we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth his spirit of his son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father, or Daddy. That's relationship. Amen? Therefore... You are no longer a slave, but a son, and if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. But then indeed, when you did not know God, you served those which by nature are not gods. But now after you've known God, or rather are known by God, how is it that you turn again to the weak and beggarly elements to which you would desire again to be in what? Bondage. And many people are doing that. And one of the reasons is because they move without being sent. See, God places them under guardians and stewards and so forth, and mentors. And they move without being sent. So they make their own choices and decisions, and they fall into traps again. Because why? The covering isn't there. Amen? When God sends you, he covers you. If you send yourself, you're not covered. It takes a longer period of time then. And one of the things we don't want to do is fall into repeat. Amen? You don't want to build the same building over and over and over again. Praise God. You want to do it right. You want to wait on God. You want to be willing to do whatever it takes. You want to be able to hear. You want to be directed by dreams and visions and revelations. 
and you want confirmations in everything that you do. If you don't get confirmation, you can be easily misled. Amen? Remember, right now, there is so much deception. And there's great deception. There's great deception in the body of Christ. We need each other. Fellowship is essential. Amen? We're to be a family. Hallelujah. It's time to family stand up and unite. Battle, fight, and expand. Because time is running out. And there's many souls out there that are totally deceived and lost. And God is depending on us, those who are reliable. Father, we thank you for your word tonight. We are honored and blessed. We ask you to see that has been imparted, Lord, with grow and bear fruit for your glory. And that you'd visit us in dreams and visions, bringing us counsel, correction, and direction. That we may follow your lead and not our own. That you would fill us with your spirit and keep us connected. That we'd come to a place where we discern lukewarmness and coldness. But we want to be hot and on fire for you in everything we do. So, Lord, as you bless us coming in, Lord, bless us going out. Bring strength and healing and revelation to your people. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen.